So PRC is a real estate company. How is it that it's getting into uh, agribusiness? Well, at PRC, one of our core pillars is innovation. So we thought that our people keep buying properties. We have loyal customers who keep buying properties. We get one, they buy another one, they buy. And once one of them asks us, so what do I do with all of this property? So we just had a, we looked around, we did a little bit of research, and we realized, you know what? There's a gap in this country. Nairobi right now has about 6 million to 7 million people. Most of the land that used to grow this food in Kiambu is now housing. It has more value that way. So we figured we have to change the way we do things. And we decided let's create a, an infrastructure, a community that can actually earn money while, provide, while giving a solution to the Nairobians. So tell me, how does Kilimo Biashara work? It, it, it's, a very, it's a very big idea. Many people I've come across don't quite understand it. Basically, look at it this way. We are creating a community of farmers. Look at it this way. Uh, you, you, when you, get a, you buy a house in, in an estate, let's say Buruburu, right? Um, you buy your house, and in and of itself, being alone, you'll only get uh, a value of what? Four, five million. But when it's done in unison, when it's done in uniformity, and the infrastructure is there, you have access to water, tapped water, you have access to power, you have access to, to schools, to churches, to mosques, it, it, it increases the value of that place. Now, that's what you're doing in, in uh, Kilimo Biashara. You're having a community of people who are coming together and saying, what, I want to be a farmer. But in instead of me coming alone and creating my own greenhouse and creating my own borehole, water supply and employing, let's do it as a community. So what you're providing is the infrastructure. And you're managing these things, the, all the greenhouses together. Like in Buni now, we have, we're going to have 329 greenhouses. That's a big, a big, big, big project. So what's, what is happening is, then we go out there and market for you. You see, when you set up your own greenhouse, you have to sell, you have to get the inputs, you have to get the, the know-how to do the, the farming. Um, you have to contend with, with small, small issues, what are missing, challenges as usual. But here we have gotten someone who's a professional in that. We have some Israeli company called AgriGreen, who are actually doing the growing. So basically, you sit down as an investor, and, and someone does the work for you, and you get rewarded for it. Just like you'd buy a house in Buruburu and be a landlord and lend it out to someone, and then it's an estate management that is managing it. That's how to look at it. Okay. So even the value grows four or five times as opposed to if it was just land. Basically, we've done three projects so far. In the first project, we just gave you a portion of a greenhouse. We did not own the greenhouse. That, that, that it, was, it was in Abadea, Two, we had some 56 greenhouses, which people bought a stake in a greenhouse. Now, so far we have, uh, those investors have been repaid about 24 million shillings. Now, in the second one, which is now Mbuni, you actually buy the property and pay for the greenhouse. So you actually own it, you have title to your property. And about 100 people have already received titles, as we speak. Now, once you own it, you're now part of a larger community that now says this is how we manage this place. So you, own, you are an investor, you're a farmer, you're an employer. You, you, you are just a Kenyan that we need to have. And the goodness of it is you don't have to sit there every day and see how it, it, how it, how it works. So you can come on a Saturday with your friends, uh, with your family, and, and, and basically have Nyama there and say, look, this is my greenhouse. And I'm employing someone, I'm employing the local community, I am giving them you know, some income. I think that's, what we should, that's the only way we can grow as Kenyans. On the marketing side of it, you see, there's something that when you have that lacks in this, in this, in this, in the food industry, and this is very simple. Most of us are one are, are event farmers. We are product farmers, as in, if I'm growing potatoes, the day I harvest, I sell. Then I have to wait to plant again and harvest and sell. So you don't have what is called consistency. So put yourself there. Now you're a restaurant owner. Every day you need potatoes, and you need a certain um, standard and quality and quantity of potato. Now, what ends up happening, unless you know a hundred farmers who can supply you a hundred days, you're in trouble. But here you have a solution for you where you can come in one stop shop and tell us, look, every day I need 50 kilos of carrots. We can give them to you because of the vast number of, uh, of, of greenhouses. 
or even if it's tomatoes, capsicum, whatever it is you want. Right now you're doing even uh, cucumbers. So basically you're assured that you'll get the same quantity, the same quality, it will be consistent every time you need it. And I think that is what has been lacking in the Kenyan market, such that now the brokers have had a field day because they know who's growing what, who's growing what, so they can link all of those up and at the same time make more margins on the farmers. In this time now, the, the, the retailers, the restauranters and, and, and the people who are selling the groceries can be sure of the quality of their produce. They can be sure of um, the, the, the quantity and the consistency, even traceability. In case there's anything, right now if you go into a supermarket and buy, let's say, strawberries, and something happens to you, that, that, that supermarket guy might not be able to know even where, where that thing came from. Or you bought uh, cabbage and it had lead in it, they don't know. But in our case now, they know they can come, do in, they can come investigate. We want to work with all government agencies for, for qualification. For, so that we can have proper quality, they can verify that you're doing the right thing. Because for us, we are in this for the long haul. We do not want to hit and run. Okay. So I've bought a piece of land, and here I am, maybe I've invested. What if at some point I feel that I want to sell the piece of land? Yes, you can dispose. Mm -hmm. You also need to get realize that once the project is working, like right now, when you started this project, it was just land, you were selling it, the Mbuni one at 950,000, both land and greenhouse. Right now, as we speak, it's 1.2 million. And guess what? they're moving faster because now people can see we've set up the greenhouses we've set up the the pumping system we've set up the boreholes the generators the fatigation units the water water supply system so the demand is increasing yes tell me about the greenhouse technology and possibly why you have chosen this kind of technology yes the technology you're using is is modern day you you cannot feed uh, the modern uh, population using the old and the older way of doing things. So what you're doing you're, you're, with this Israeli company, we have imported the greenhouses and, uh, and, 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 and the fatigation kits from them, such that, for example, uh, in this greenhouse, you will notice someone applying fertilizer on the crop. It's injected through the, 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 the watering system using a system called a fatigation kit. That ensures every crop gets the right one. There's, there's minimum human interference with the crop. Um, the greenhouse is, 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 is specific to that area. It's a very hot area. So you'll find that our greenhouses, unlike the, only the top is, is um, continuous sheet. The rest is netting because of the heat. So that's what we can regulate the heat in there. Um, you'll find that you're using um, um, what do you call it? The, 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 the valve kits to do the fatigations, they are all, it's all an Israeli setup to, to get it done. It, it is something to behold. Once you're using that technology, you, you, you get extremely efficient. For example, if you're pumping, you see the drip has a hole next to where the plant is. So the, the, they're not, there's not going to be wastage of, of, of what it is you're, you're putting in the fertilizers, the, the, the fungicides you need, you know. We need to, the efficiencies come. And because the plant is getting it at the optimal point, let's say in the evening or in the morning and the temperature is regulated, it means productivity increases, the plant grows faster. Um, I wish you could get a picture. We, in two weeks, you would be shocked at how big um, the cucumbers have grown. Just two weeks, because everything is just right. We've put in agronomists, we've put in people who understand what to do. So what, what that does is the production per, per plant is big and much better than ordinary winning we get more income and again it becomes more efficient because if you tell people okay now go and spread the fertilizer there's wastage uh, so and then the mixing ratios might be wrong but here you have one agronomist who mixes the whole place and releases to various greenhouses right now in the country we have a uh, concern of gmos is this any different from gmos yes it is different from gmos what you're doing is you're using hybrid. Hybrid is uh, crops are crops that have uh, 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 been developed to ensure that they are resistant to diseases, that the production is higher, and that even if it's, for example, a tomato, it can last longer on a shelf. It's not a GMO. It's just enhanced to make it more productive. Yeah, for commercial scale production. You've mentioned severally that you're using Israeli technology. Why? Why Israeli technology? 
We settled on Israeli technology because world over, this, 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 uh, the Israelis are known to be very good when it comes to agriculture. They've converted their desert into an export zone of, of greenery. You know, it, it's, it's shocking. And many of them, once you're having a conversation, and they couldn't believe the climate we have here. And then you tell them, you know what, uh, we do not have enough food, and they're in shock. So he said, you know what, let's partner. You have the name, you have the technical know-how, you have the knowledge, you have the equipment, let's partner. And that's what is happening now. Let's talk shillings and cents, because at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's where the rubber meets the road. How much should one expect to make out of an investment like this? Yes, like any other business, shillings and cents is about income and costs and efficiencies. So um, the bigger you get, the more economies of scale you get. Right? Like now, there we have 329, we're going to have 329 greenhouses. Then you'll find that instead of having every greenhouse with a small um, tank for, for watering, we have a tank that holds about half a million uh, liters of water. So then you, it's shared about among 369. So the costs go down. Now, if you, what, we, what we will be selling, actually, if you ask me, is not, is not um, products. Uh, what you'll be selling, our brand promise for Kilimo Biashara is quality, consistency, and quantity. So if you're a restaurant and you're running a big five-star hotel and you want to be sure where your food comes from, you want to be sure um, that you'll get it when you need it, that you can plant according to your demand, then you're safe. And I think that's what people have been looking for. And now you're there. So the demand is there. So uh, the issue now is how do we manage this production to meet that demand. Once you have demand, uh, revenue is right, and you have your cost right, then the shillings and cents make, make sense, yes. And then you're in this for the long haul. We're not here for one year, two years, then we take off. We're in this for the long haul. So our customers and investors are OK. And how have we done this? We've created an entirely different company to run with agribusiness, to do the marketing, to do the selling. We've sent one of our staff to Germany to study markets in Europe, in Asia, so that we have the know-how on how to do this. Okay. Yeah. We know that in Kenya our farming has been different. We farm in open land. Why did you specifically settle on greenhouse farming? Doing it the way you've always done is the reason you've had shortages, <laughs> right? So we chose, let's, this is how we came up with this idea. The guy in the rural area cannot feed Nairobi because they do not understand Nairobi. I mean, for example, you are in Rumuruti, let's say. You've never gone beyond the town. You do not understand the dynamics of the town. You don't understand. The guy you know is that, is that broker who comes to buy from you, and he always, ever always oppresses you. Yeah? So we thought, let's use the urbanite and use modern technology to feed the modern person. Now, Greenhouse is known to, be, to have the best production per square meter because of the controlled environment. Sometimes, you know, you can do, they used to do then, like this year, you can see what's happening in the rains. So supposing he had gone that way and he had given you a greenhouse, you'd be cursing us right now, you know, and saying, you guys told us it's going to work, it's not working. But now, we are, even if it rains, we are good. If the sun doesn't shine, we are good. If, 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 if um, we have our own water supply, we have our own generator, so we are, we are self-sufficient. And that ensures that production keeps happening. Now, once I've got into this kind of investment, how, how, how involved should I be? Maybe I'm a businessman and I just want to invest and go about my other business. How involved should I be in this? With PRC, we see you more as an investor. You'll come, now it's going for 1.2 in Buni. Give us the money, we will schedule you, and we do our greenhouses in batches of 50. Um, then you, st you sit back. You'll be told this is your plot. Now, we'll give you a title to your land, and you'll know that one is, that gives you the assurance, that one is mine. You can go even borrow against it, it's yours. And the land is freehold. So from there, you can now sit back and Come and see what's happening. If you want to, you not mean you don't need to do any management. You don't need to do any selling. You don't need to go and you know find. Uh, you see what happens when you set up your own greenhouses. You have to go and find workers. What do we do? Because we think it's very rudimentary work. We go up uh, and get that cousin who, who, is difficult in the village, and you told go give him a job. And what you don't realize is you actually got on yourself a headache. Yeah, and by the time you realize it, your business has gone down. And that's why you see a lot of greenhouses standing alone. Very few actually work. And it's because of, it's, it's, it's a job. It's, it's a full-time job. So we do not, for us, just come and enjoy it. Come and show your family this is what I've bought. 
there's water making from it. You can always come any time. In fact, we're going to have a place you can come and relax and have your nyama and just enjoy, yes. Okay. And what guarantees do you offer? We do know that every business stands a risk. What guarantees do I have? All right, first and foremost, remember it's a business. And every business has risks, just like you say. But what really uh, makes the difference is how you mitigate those risks. Like for example, uh, we have taken mitigation risks on in take by taking insurance. And this insurance will cover, for example, if the greenhouse gets spoiled by hail, stones, you know, if, if, if the generator gets stolen, or you know, it covers all of that. So you're covered as an individual. And more than that, we have production cover. So we agree with the insurance, look, the way we are doing, according to a planting protocol, we are supposed to get at least 100 tons, for example, of, 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 of uh, capsicum. And they give us a guarantee, if it doesn't work, then you're going to get this much as compensation. But for you to do that, you must have your proper planting protocols, you must have the professionals to do it. It's not you just walk in and get that kind of cover. So those are the mitigations we have done. Okay. Yeah. If I invested and I got to a point where I possibly want to change uh, the way the land is used, or maybe sell it, is that an option that I have? We, we do not encourage that for this reason. You, you bought as a community and the infrastructure there is for, is for the farming. Um, one, I don't think the community will agree. By the way, remember as you're running this, you also have the other members on board. They, they, they obviously form their own you know, oversight. They want to know what's going on, it's our property. And so you're going to have some mechanisms to make sure that you do not change. Um, and we hope you don't. We hope that it is rewarding enough for you to keep it as is, or at worst, then let it go as is to someone else. Maybe just highlight for me, what are some of the advantages that I have because I am in this community? What advantages are there to work within a community? One, remember in this community, there are people of different professions and different areas of influence. When you come together, your power becomes more. Yeah, you can help assist each other more, you get to know each other more, you come and say, look, by the way, I bought this, but I work for this in this hotel, can I also get supplied? But you see, you know, it has to come through the management company. The other advantage you get is you get professional management of your farm. You get, uh, how many of us can, can afford an Israeli to come and farm for you? Yeah, but because you're many, it makes sense for him to come and do it. Thirdly, the marketing part of it, because of the size, you will find that most, most uh, retailers and grocers and restauranters and, and even uh, chefs and um, caterers will want to go to a place where they know I can get everything I want here and I know it's, 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 it's clean. And I know how it's been grown and I know I won't cook food. Then tomorrow I'm told, you know, I got sick because of what I ate. So that, that, that's some of the advantages. I'll go back to the shillings and cents. And the question here is accounts. I want to know how my money comes in. Here I am, I've planted maybe capsicum or whatever horticultural product. It has been exported to Germany or wherever. Money has been paid. How do I know how much I've made, especially given that we are a community? That's, that's where we, you need to look at it differently. We, we do not look at it as your greenhouse, as one greenhouse. In fact, you might come and find your greenhouse as nothing. That has not been you're not going to be paid. You get, you're farming as a community. So what you're doing in batches of 50, we get, like right now, you've done five greenhouses of capsicum, of, of cucumber. You've done 20 of capsicum, and you're doing uh, another 25 of, of uh, tomatoes. Now, you already have demands for that. Some have been planted, some have not, right? But when the payments come, it's for everyone. So there's no... So why is my why am I going growing kills on mine? Maybe because the the supermarket that wants to buy also sell, sells us okay, as you give us um, um, capsicum, can you do us this type of greens? <laughs> and so we'll do it. You see, for us that's a, that's an advantage. So the marketing is all one, the selling is all one. So that's the advantage. It's not my greenhouse. Unfortunately, that's how many people see it. Where is my greenhouse? I paid for it. Why is it not planted? That's the wrong way to look at it. And as I say, if you, if you have a house in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Buruburu, for example, in and of itself, it will be valued at 4 million. But once you are, or thereabouts, 
But once it's put in the community with all the infrastructure, then the value goes up to about 10, 12 million. That's the value you're getting. Okay, and what's the frequency of payment? How frequent do I get? We agreed with our people on a biannual payment. Yes, because you see the plant has to grow, it has to be sold. Um, these people we supply no, normally are not cash buyers because you're engaging big people. They buy in quantities, they buy in qual uh, so some, for some quality. So it takes some time to pay. But we are targeting six months, every six months. Return on investments. Every investor would want to know how fast or how quickly can I get my money back and start making a profit. What would you say are the returns on investments? All right. Um, Basically, I'll say this, it depends on a lot of things. One, the model you're using. Two, the location of where, for example, you have a farm in Abadea and you have one in Isinia. Transportation costs are different. The value of the land is different. For example, the one we sold in uh, Abadea was going for 549,000. For the same land and uh, one year, everything like you're getting in Buni at 950. But the tomato grown there and the one grown in Mbuni are the same, right? So most likely they'll fetch the same prices. Just that now that one will incur a lot of transportation, right? So the returns are different. Uh, so if, 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 if you look at, in our contracts, the ones we've given to our people, we have an estimated about a 65% return, which we think is achievable. And we are willing to take the risk with you, right? And for saying for the first year, we want to give you some assurance and you're willing to take the risk with you. So, and, and anyway, when you look at um, investments, unfortunately, most of us have this idea of I invest and I get back now. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. I have had people promising a million, 500,000, and I'm asking guys, okay, how are you going to do that? So basically, what, what, what we are doing is, um, we, we look at it professionally and we, we share with you. We are an open company. We are not here, we're here because of our customers. We are not here to, to rip them off because if I rip you off, then tomorrow you'll go and say, hey, Bwana, these guys have chased me. So it's not, it's not a secret. Eventually, we'd like to co-opt some of those owners into the management of the other company so that now we are clear where it is we are going. We do know that every business possibly has a risk factor. What are the risk factors in this particular investment? Risk factors are many. One, the biggest risk factor in farming is actually markets. It's not even production. The biggest risk is markets. You have people who grow cabbages, people who grow onions, and then at the end of the day, they have a store full of them and they do not know where to take them. So market is the biggest risk. So we've mitigated that by creating an entire distribution chain and contracts that have been signed. The second biggest one, if you ask me, is production. But how do you get a consistent quality and quantity, yeah? That is required by the market. But the biggest, the one I consider third, but is also bigger than all of this, is management. How do you manage this thing? How do you match your markets to your production and to your, into your uh, growing protocol? That if you can solve those three challenges, you're home and dry. How have you mitigated those risks that you've talked about? How is it that you've you know, taken care of those risks? For the market, as I told you, we have, a, we have appointed salespeople and we have a proper distribution system. We have contracts and, and, uh, that have been signed, right? And we already have our brand positioning. That's for the, for the production. How we've mitigated is, is getting someone with the proper know-how on how to grow. That is the Israeli company, to make sure that you can get the quantities that we want and the qualities as they are, as they are required. So those two are, are properly mitigated. And for losses, we have insurances. And that right there is where we end Morning Express this morning. We want to thank you so, so very much for keeping us company and uh, from a very dedicated and committed team that ensures Morning Express comes to you every single morning. That's from the director to the producer to the 